a twofer on uh, this Monday. On Saturday, we had a great men's study. Not great because of me, but great because of the uh, material. Now, I will say, what goes on at the men's study stays in the men's study, so no secrets will be revealed. But the material that we find on the fifth commandment in the larger catechism, so we're Presbyterians, Presbyterians adhere to, first of all, the Bible. Yes, the Bible and the confession and catechisms have to are under the Bible. They're secondary standards for sure, and we should be mindful of that. But you have the Westminster Confession, and you have the larger catechism and the shorter catechism. And we don't usually think too much about the larger catechism, but it is very rich and very rewarding to consider. In fact, in, after a Saturday, I'm thinking about whether or not we should do our summer Sunday school based on the larger catechism or portions of the larger catechism. And the fifth commandment, what was the, it was just a challenging and and encouraging and balanced. So it begins by uh, who are meant by f the father and mother in the fifth commandment. By father and mother in, in the fifth commandment are meant not only natural parents, but all superiors in age and gifts. And that's worth a, a, a discussion there in, in and of itself. And especially such as by God's ordinance are over us in place of authority, whether in family, church, or commonwealth. So you hear the fifth commandment and your first reaction is to think, oh, yeah, that means that our six-year-old children should obey their parents within the home. But it's actually much broader than that and, and has to do with uh, those who are superior in age and gifts. It's not egalitarian. People are gifted, gifted differently. We're to defer to the elderly. We're to respect the elderly and so forth. And it especially relates to family, church, or commonwealth, whether in family, church, or I should say, and commonwealth. That is within society and within the state. So the family, the church, and the commonwealth, that is, uh, the culture in which we live, and the magistrate, and, and so forth. And that did uh, influence my sermon some uh, yesterday. And then the next question is, why are superiors styled father and mother and so forth? And it talks about how, how we have this obligation. And now this obligation is in family, church, and commonwealth, as noted, that superiors have the obligation to love, to express love and tenderness to those who are under them. So as a parent... Uh, Sometimes, even last week I said, last week I spoke in a way that I shouldn't have spoken to, to my children in correcting them and had to confess that and repent uh, of that. And what's interesting, a, a, a biblical view, a full view, a mature view is not just people having authority and then they're not under authority, but those in authority have responsibilities. They are not merely free men or free women to do whatever they want to do, but they too answer to authority. So that's the case, and we mentioned yesterday in the sermon with respect to the magistrate, but fathers and mothers, uh, churchmen, that is as a pastor, that you have the right to call me to account, that you have the right to, to uh, appeal to the other elders, appeal to the presbytery and so forth, and and that's true even within the home. Of course, all this takes a lot of nuancing and what do we mean by that and so forth. And then the duty of inferiors or those who are under. So don't be offended by the language superiors and inferiors that, that they're looking to explain uh, what the obligations and privileges are of both. That, that those uh, who are inferiors, that they have to have a greater willingness and cheerfulness in performing their duties to their superiors as to their parents. A willingness and a cheerfulness and uh, spoke some about how elders are, uh, how in Hebrews 13, 17, that, that uh, members have a responsibility to make their, uh, uh, make their elders' job a joy, to make it easy and so forth. And that also convicts me with respect to the magistrate because it would be very easy for me to go off on a pretty long tirade about certain things that the magistrate is doing now or has, has been doing and, and so forth. So willingness and cheerfulness. So this is in the larger uh, catechism. It uh, begins with 123 and goes through question 133, it looks like, on page 956 and 957. And lots of rich material, challenging material to the, both the superiors and inferiors, that is, to parents, to children, uh, to uh, those with authority within the church, to those who uh, don't necessarily or only have, uh, are not officers within the church, and then also with respect to the magistrate and being a citizen and a Christian a citizen. And certainly, whatever I said yesterday would, in, uh, would include that 
uh, we are not anarchists, that we are uh, to honor the king and to do what we can to make the king's life easy, uh, so to speak, whenever possible. So I want to encourage you, A, to explore the larger catechism, B, to explore it with respect to the fifth commandment, its very rich material, and to consider uh, how that might apply not only as parents to children and younger children, but also in the family more broadly speaking, and then within the church and within the commonwealth, so that we would learn as uh, those with authority to express love and tenderness, that's a way to uh, summarize, and then as those who are under authority, that there would be a, a willingness and a cheerfulness in our obligations one to another. So uh, thankfully God, as uh, the chief authority, uh, shows uh, much love and tenderness to us. He treats us not as our sins deserve, and may uh, that uh, may uh, our response even mimic uh, the catechism that we would have a willingness and a cheerfulness in serving him. Lord, help the people of God uh, to this end, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Good day now.